Okay guys, so I have a um, easy go golf cart and was trying to find videos online. Found quite a few videos, but nothing really kind of described exactly what I was running into. So um, if you guys have a moment, I'll run through what I found. So it's kind of probably going to name it Rebuild Tips and Tricks. So a um, few things. Golf cart would start fine. You'd give it gas, wouldn't go anywhere, um, had good compression for the most part, would get hot as the, as the engine would get hot, compression would fall out, off a little bit. And then what the golf cart would do is it just wouldn't go. You could put one person on it, it would go a little better. You put two people on it, wouldn't go. Thought, okay, maybe it's the clutch. Uh, check the clutch, no. So never done, never worked on an easy go before. Um, so went ahead and started on it. So I wanna kinda of show you what you gotta to do to pull the motor out of this, cause I learned a lot. I made a lot of stupid mistakes. Um, and so anyway, I've learned, I learned a bunch. So what you can do is on the bottom side, there is, there'll be a, there'll be a plate here. I haven't put it back on yet, but there'll be a skid plate, but you have this bolt here, right here. And then there's another one right there so you take those loose then you have two down there you have that one right there and that one right there and that one right there is going to need an in wrench to get to it's a 16 millimeter everything is metric okay i took the cover off the box so you don't have to do it but mine's this one's old golf cart missing a few but You'll take these two nuts off, pull this off, then there'll be two more nut, or there'll be four bolts behind it, all threads, all threads. Pull those off, this will come off. Your carburetor is here. You've got your inlet, you've got a couple of drains, which mine don't have. Then you've got these linkages. Now these linkages here, just pop off, just nice and easy, they just pop off, okay? You're gonna have one little one here, you're gonna have this one, and then you're gonna have this one right here. You can see it right there, okay? You can leave a lot of stuff on this motor and just take it off on your bench. So once I got the motor, once I got the four bolts loose, I took my four, you have this bolt, this bolt, and then you have these two on the bracket, and then the exhaust will slay back. Then you can pick the motor out, pop this belt off. This belt will come off real easy. Just push it over and spin it and it'll come right off. Then this one will get loose on your starter and then you can pull the motor out, okay? Now, when you pull the motor out, you'll have this bracket here, a lot of 10 millimeter on this job. It's gonna be 16 millimeter, um, 11 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 90% of the bolts are 10 millimeter, and then a 13 and a 14. It's pretty much all you need. Okay, so pull the, pull the, when you get this motor up on your bench, um, and this, of course, this will be gone, you'll have a bolt down there which is holding um, this bracket. It's holding the bracket, but it's also holding the um, ground for the starter. You see it right down there. And then You'll take this off, you'll take, there's three bolts holding this, the cover, and then you'll get to your fan. And then on the, on the other side, over here, you have your clutch, okay? You take, you pull this bolt off, and then you have to go, I ordered it off of Amazon. You need this, okay? And then when you pull that bolt off, you put this in there and you tighten it and it'll pop that, it'll pop that clutch off. All right, so you've got your clutch off. You'll have, you'll have your clutch off. This is where all your timing uh, sprockets are. Guys, I've never rebuilt a golf cart motor in my life. The only thing I've ever done is four wheelers and that was a long, long time ago. Super simple. The, the place I was gonna take this was gonna charge me well, one, they didn't want to rebuild it. And they said if they rebuilt it, it was going to be like $1,500. The parts and everything, I paid $315 for all the parts. And I bought a lot of parts. So 
Um, that was including this new battery from, o, from O'Reilly's. So um, I'm just saying it's not hard. So I pulled this off. Once I got it, I put it up on my bench. I pulled this off. There is on the top is your sprocket. That's your cams in here. You got your sprocket here for your cam. You've got right about in here, you got a tensioner. And then down here, you've got your oil pump sprocket, okay? When you pull it off, there's a book you can, and I can, I'll, uh, I'll uh, try to put the link in the, in the bottom, but there's a book and on the book, it's gonna tell you, but on the top of that sprocket, there's gonna be, there's a, there's a hole here on the sprocket, a hole here on the sprocket and a hole here. The single hole on the top of this will be a little V-notch. When you pull this cover off, you'll see a V-notch. That hole has to face that V-notch. That's, that means it's in time and, and the pistons are uh, top dead centered. They're at the top of the cylinder head and then down here on the bottom it's got a little circle on the top of that sprocket which you can't move it anyway most of the time <clears throat> if your if your pistons are where they are it'll be pointed the way it needs to be so like just push your piss turn this to make sure your pistons are at uh, top dead center and then you'll see a little dot above it and you just take that and line it up with that dot and then you're in time just put the belt on okay the tensioner takes like a 13 or a 14 millimeter, you screw it off, you can push it back and forth. Easy stuff, okay? That's once you get it back together. So you've got the motor on the bench, um, you pull this off, you pull the, um, the three sprockets off, lay them aside, behind that is another cover, that's this cover. It's got two bolts in it, pull those off, okay? And then you've got this off. And then on this side, You'll pull this cover off and then behind it you got a fan and then that fan takes a pretty big socket, let me tell you. Inch and a quarter, I didn't have metric so this was close enough and it worked really good, but you 100% have to have an impact, 100%, okay? First time I did it, I took a pry bar like this, this pry bar. I put it right behind the fan on the metal part by the, by the, by the stem, pushed on it, took a mallet with a, a brass mallet, put my screw all the way back on it where it wouldn't hit the threads and just gave it a small tap, popped right off, okay? Once that pops off, then you've got, um, you've got a, a, a cover and the cover's got eight or 10 bolts, okay? They're gonna be 11 millimeter, are 10 millimeter and they're gonna be a 13, two 13 millimeters. They're about right up here, the 13s are, kind of on the high side. When you take them off, okay, and you slide the cover off, you're gonna have access to your crank and your, your rod bearings, okay? Um, you have to take this cover off, and when you take that cover off, um, you'll, have, you'll have access to your, you'll have access to your crank, let me just do that. Let me pull this off. A couple of things I missed. Um, this is like pretty much the only wire limb you have, but you gotta pop these off before you take the motor out, of course. And then there's a plug right here. You just flip that up and pull it. And then this white wire right here, it's got a, just an easy connector. You just pop it out and then you're good to go. So I did want to remind you of that. I also wanted to show you, the, so here's my, here's my pistons. And you can see that the rods are completely gone. They were just shot completely. Now, when you're putting these in, the cylinder, um, one, pull them out and set them the way they came out originally for the rods. Because if you can't get new rods like I couldn't, but they're gonna go in and I just bought this little tool right here. It slips over it, holds the rings in, and then you just tap it down with a, I used a, I used a hammer. The handle of this hammer, just nice tap. Um, get me to go back in there, but there's, there's tons of videos on that part of it, but <clears throat> just make sure when you're doing that, that on the rod, on the rod, it'll say fan. That points towards this fan. So when you're when you're looking at the motor, you'll have a piston here and a piston here. 
okay? When you shove them down in there, fan needs to face this away. You need to be reading fan while you're sticking them in there. So that is one thing I wanted to tell you that I'd forgot about. I also highly recommend one of these, of course. These things are amazing. Put this thing on reverse. Okay. Um, so you have to lash the valves when it's when the valves are cold. So um, I lashed my valves. I'll be honest. I lashed my valves while my motor was setting on my on my bench. It made it was so much easier. Um, I bought a kit off of Amazon. I'll try to put that copy that on there too. But the kit that I bought on Amazon had. Um, it had a bunch of different sets of gaskets. Apparently there's a couple of different sizes of these. This is a Robin 295. Um, and there's a plate right there that'll tell you what it is. Um, and mine, there was a, I guess it was a couple of different models of the Robin. And so the kit that I bought off Amazon came with all of them. And I'll tell you what, it is getting harder and harder to find um, parts for these. It really is. Okay, now, there's your cam and there's your lifters, okay? Now, when you pull this cover off, like I was telling you, there's this plate right here. When you pull that plate off, your cam will slide. Your cam will slide back out this way. Nice, I mean, just as easy as possible, okay? And then on this, when you pull that plate off, this little rod that's holding your, um, your rockers on and lifters, It'll, what I did was, is I pinched them like this and I pulled and it just slides. And then you can slip this one off, slip your, so you've got, you've got a, um, a rocker, then you've got a spacer, rocker, spring, rocker, spacer, rocker, okay? There we go. Okay, and then what, what you have to do is you have to lash these valves um, four thousandths, so point oh oh four, each one of them. Okay, and these ones that I bought, I'm not a big fan of. They don't have a flat screwdriver head on them. They're kind of a pain. So um, I'm gonna have to put those back the way they were. There it goes. Um, so anyway, that's gonna slide out. Now it gives you access because to get this head off, you have this bolt here. Then you have one behind, one underneath the cam here, one underneath the cam here. And then you have, this is a cover. You have one on this end, one on that end, two in the center, and then one over here and one over there, okay? Then your head's off and you have access to your pistons. Now, what I wanna tell you, the re whole reason I'm doing this video, when you get to those pistons, the book is gonna tell you, um, what is it, uh, 120 inch pounds, give or take. And if you're like me, when you bought it, um, of course, I, I, I honed the heads. Pistons had good clearances. Everything was fine. That, that wasn't a problem. But what I ran into was um, if I torqued them to factory spec, my motor would, my engine wouldn't turn over, period. I'd have to use, a, I mean, a huge crescent to get it to spin. So... When I bought my kit, it did not come with rod, rod bearings, um, or rods and rod caps, I'm sorry. It didn't come with rods and rod caps. So I started doing some research, couldn't find anything, and that's what, kind of why I wanted to do this video was, when you're doing that, typically you can get like a plus or minus, right? So I can't remember exactly, I think it was 120, um, 120 inch pounds on them. But whenever I would do that, it wouldn't spin, right? So if I did plus or minus, I took it down to 112 inch pounds and my motor would spin fine. Clearance, I mean, uh, easy to spin, easy to turn over. So I was able to put it back together and get it in here. So just remember, don't, don't make the mistake I did whenever you're doing that and Assume that it's got to be exactly what factory spec is because there is a plus or minus in there. I'm sure engine builders know this and think I'm absolutely stupid, but I'm just talking to the people like me. It's never done it. 
you know, you want to save 1500 bucks. They were going to charge me $3,000 to take this motor out and put a Kawasaki motor in because they said this motor was shot. I did this work. I've been running this thing for two weeks. Hard, hard, hard out here on the farm. Zero issues. Okay. You can easily do this. So, and then, so once I did it, pulled it out the second time when I figured that issue out, um, put it back in, um, I've had no problems. So I did cool it. Uh, lashed the valves, drove it for a day out here, probably put, you know, 10 hours on it, parked it. The next morning, I lashed the valves again, just went through here and just lashed them. Um, and they were slightly off, fixed that, uh, just relashed them. And it's been running for two or three weeks now, or several days, I guess. I guess I just did that. And um, no problems. Um, works good, runs good. Um, so anyway, I did change my fuel filter and a couple other things, but um, I've got to order an air filter. That's why this is off. I'm fixing to put it on. Um, anyway, any questions? If you get to where you're working on this thing and you're, and you're taking one apart and you have questions, feel free to shoot me a message. I'd love to help you out because, man, I'm going to tell you what, this thing kicked my butt the first few days. So it really did. But... I learned a ton and it would never happen again. So figured a lot of that out. Um, just like some confusing stuff. Like I didn't pay attention when I took my battery off and you got a black cable going over here that you're positive in DC voltage. That makes no sense. You've got your green, which you would be expecting red and red, right? On positive. No, this green is run over here to this fuse block over here for your lights and all that. So it's green and black going to that. You've got a chassis ground and then a black, which is what you would expect on the negative side. That, that all makes sense, but this positive stuff was confusing as heck. So it took me a little while to figure that out, omen it out and ringing things out with my fluke meter. So anyway, if I can help, let me know. Um, this thing runs great. Um, and so just thought I would send you guys a little video so you can have some tips and tricks if you start working on one. Thanks, guys.